Welcome to this presentation titled Players Diving Deep, Eliciting Play Experiences with an Argumentative Qualitative Interview Method. My name is Heidi Rautalahti and I'm a doctoral candidate and researcher at the University of Helsinki in Finland. This presentation gives ideas and hands-on aspects to consider and execute an argumentative qualitative interview proposed here for user or game experience research. Especially in the UX context, my talk can be transferred to aims concerning what players want from your game or service in a bigger picture. Additionally, to strengthen my argument, I present a case example where the method has been used. First, a short introduction of myself. I have worked at the university since 2016 and my PhD research addresses contemporary discussions of religion among video games and gamers. This means I am extremely interested in player experiences, how contemporary meaning making happens with games and what meanings do players carry to their day-to-day -day lives. I have research experience of looking at games and game cultures from different angles and today I want to talk to you about one method which I argue could be developed for user experience research objectives. So I come from a qualitative humanist background to games research but additionally I am a team leader in an independent Helsinki-based collective working on an explorer simulator game called Runo which is inspired by Finnish folk beliefs. So now you know a little bit more where I'm coming from with this presentation. My talk is based on a qualitative study and interview data I did among Finnish adult video game players in spring 2019. The question for my study at that time was to ask how meaningful connections with video games are narrated among players. I wanted to know how players describe and narrate these encounters, connections, affinities, memories or reflections with game worlds. The only qualification for partaking in the study was that the player would have experiences in larger adventure and story-driven video games that were rather played alone than in a group. This rule was set having the personal experiences and individual encounters in mind. Well, for user experience purposes and objectives, research targeted towards consumer behavior, their likes, dislikes or aspects on accessibility and gameplay, the question of a meaningful connection or encounter might be excess, or is it? Even if your user study aim is not to dive deep, Three remarks I argue in my talk may transfer as hands-on practices to motivate the interview study participant and inspire them to deliver opinionated answers, that is, answers describing what consumers really think. In this talk, I also cite notion on research ethics, which I believe should be at core when designing any study. So I ask you to keep an open mind in hearing about my case example and further on I will draw together what to take home from this talk. So my method of choice for the interview is was an individual argumentative interview approach developed for example by Vesala and Rantanen 2007 as I mentioned in the beginning. In short this meant that the semi-structured interviews I constructed were introduced by arguments or statements to the interviewed players. The purpose of this method was to produce free and open-ended argumentation, which again meant to elicit and motivate the player to recollect and narrate first encounter stories of meaningful experiences with video games. The interviews ultimately resulted in a collection of narrative themes of important personal life stories that some video games were able to afford. 
I will not go into methodological origins of this interview type, however, I think it's shortly worth mentioning the original method design and compare it to my so-called tweaked study method. The argumentative interviews were firstly designed to examine attitudes. However, my study did not focus on attitudes, but more on using the method as a tool for elicitation. In other words, my aim was to let players to talk about their personal memories and even sensitive life events comfortably in a constructed interview setting. It turned out that the used, use of fixed arguments allowed players to discuss freely their opinions and ideas that came up during the interview. Simultaneously, the arguments became light segues to more personal topics. Many of my interview participants gave positive feedback of the chosen method when I asked about this process in the end. It was easy to talk, they said. So what did my interviewees respond to when they were presented with the study arguments? Here you see the seven arguments the interviewed players could freely react to. They ended up declining some statements, argue against, refuse the use of some words or concepts in the sentences, or agree to them completely. In practice, in my view, I ended up with clearly divided sections and answers I could document and manage data-wise. The arguments provided clear guidelines and themes how to manage or categorize the study data. I will not read out loud all the arguments here, but to give you an overview of the types of sentences I formulated, I will mention especially one. A specific guiding aspect of using different language and words in these arguments was to see how contagious certain explanatory concepts were. I was basically examining in the sidelines which of the presented concepts appealed to the respondents and how did they begin to formulate their narratives. Here, for example, the use of the words sacred or enchanted represented concepts I deliberately set out to examine and see whether players would in fact narrate their experiences using these meanings. I was also interested in how players would unravel these concepts when situating their narrative in a game world context. Especially enchantment described something players attached to and begun to explain their experiences through the concept. To be enchanted at awe or wonder at game worlds became something players wanted to experience describe or articulate as a meaningful encounter with games. Many specified that to, to be enchanted would in fact be a first time experience, feeling or sensation rather hard to duplicate later on with the same game. So how to implement this method for your purposes? To phrase it simply, the tone of the arguments needs to be articulated in a way that the possible answer is something more than a simple yes or no. This could be easily solved by asking your colleagues first. Make them be the guinea pig. If the answer is more than a nope, you are on the right track. All in all, the narrative themes I was able to extract from the interview data, found their thematical titles as life events, big questions, and the already described enchantment. As a narrative theme of meaningful encounters, life events meant that players experienced games in sensitive or difficult phases in life. Players had memories of certain games or play moments helping them in stressful situations. Here, some game characters and stories provided reflection and food for thought. Sometimes games were a break in an otherwise chaotic phase in life. Big questions meant that players preferred to contemplate with games 
on life's unanswered questions, such as existential, moral, and deeper self-reflections. Games became a sought-out companion for these reflections and dialogues player wanted to experience and explore. It is of course worth to note that games as default ask for an explorative mindset and attitude, as I see it. Also, it is important to point out here that the play memories players were recalling were mostly impacted by mainstream games, however, indie games were mentioned too. So finally, what to take home? I have talked about how to conduct a qualitative study and its choice of interview method in eliciting player stories on meaningful encounters with games. To draw together tips and hands-on ideas, think of my talk as a chance to step outside of the, in air quotes, online survey box, but still end up with a may way to manage qualitative data. Qualitative research methods do not have to be messy or too time-consuming. Time so answering questions is hard. Go and make it easier for your study subjects. To answer insightful questions about your own personal life could be awkward, difficult or even off-putting. To give opinions and express your likes and dislikes is easy when given fixed arguments. And while doing this, you start to reflect on your life. Deep themes become manageable, not only to the interviewee, but to the researcher as well. The researcher has the authoritative power and responsibility over the study setting, which may create a hierarchy between the interviewer and interviewee. The use of arguments seems to bypass these roles so that the interviewee is actually answering to the arguments and not to the researcher. This again eases the sensitive interview situation. The conversation begins to circle around the arguments and downplay the power relation, to my experience. Here, I want to remind you also of research ethics. The interview situation in no means is to be uncomfortable to the interviewee. So don't go diving and splashing around if you haven't considered the ethical aspects of your study design. So qualitative methods may look like time-consuming ways of examining user and player experiences, but what they lack in time management they make for enriched data and feedback. Remember that definitely if your aim is to extract detailed playtest data from users, my choice of method would not be an in-person interview, to state the obvious. However, if your objective is to contemplate on the games and users' emotional engagement and reception, feelings, or meaning making with a game, then this is on point for you. Qualitative interviews might even serve as tools for user community building and ways to engage hardcore fans. I encourage you to explore this aspect of using person in-person interviews. A successful in-person interview has also the possibility to provide a secure place for the interviewee. The interviewee too wants to be heard and share their experiences. As my interviewees told me, they wanted to come and tell me their important personal stories and encounters with video games. Many felt very passionate of this aim and expressed their concern how popular culture fandoms were sometimes referred to as mundane or irrelevant in public discussions. So to really narrow it down, the key tips to take home are provide a space which is secure and engaging. Acquire time to do this, to plan out your study carefully 
is to save time in other later processes. And listen. Players need to be heard, they have deep thoughts to share, and they want to share them with you. And all that is left to say is, of course, thank you for listening. And I am more than excited to keep this discussion going on on player experiences and meaning making. So please reach out and let's talk more. The study I have been referring to in my talk and case example is based on an article I wrote that is at the moment forthcoming to the Journal of Popular Culture and Religion. And here I listed some of my other publications on the topics of player experiences and game analysis, especially on contemporary discussions on religion and video games. So finally, I would be so pleased if you would follow our game collective and Runo uh, on our Twitter account for our latest news. Thank you.